ready. Like, oh, let's do yeah. it. I'm just going to bring my okay. dog up here so he can do yeah. shit. <laughs> Bam. Hey, everyone. It's Mint, a.k.a. Mint Berry. They, them. Um, and, yeah. I am a wacky, eclectic yarn witch, 40 years old. I've been practicing for, I don't even know how many years to say anymore. I've been saying 25 years for so long that I just keep saying it. I've been practicing since I was 11, I'll say. So since I was 11 years old. So for a long time, you know, um, magic has just always been my most um, rampant hyperfixation. It's something that I've always been very interested in, um, starting with medicinal plants, finding out that they also had magical properties, and just adding that into my everyday life. I was also a martial artist as a child, so meditation and centeredness and presence was very important to me. So I just, I had a very, um, I'll say, a, a different type of childhood that led me to wanting magic to be a part of my everyday life and being able to see it as a part of everyday life so yeah so you said you had like a very different growth like uh, um up up upbringing upbringing is the term that I'm looking for Uh, (laughs) did you you grow up pagan or did you like what was that I so so growing up it was kind of like a really interesting thing we always had lots of traditions in my family I have a very I come from a very mixed um, I come a very a very proud mixed family. I'll put it that way. So there are a lot of parts of the cultures that my family belongs to that my that my dad specifically really like wanted to drive into my brain. So um, knowing that I was Nigerian and knowing that I had a really huge connection to um, the indigenous tribes that are in my family, there was just something that mixing those two things together and knowing that I was a part of something so great made me want to research more and study more. And so a lot of those like really interesting traditions and superstitions that were in my family um, made my life feel magical. You know, everything felt more magical to me than, you know, um, everyday life. So talking to my friends about like, you know, the weird things that my grandma would do when she's like cooking and like preparing food and then like taking parts of like the food aside for other things and and like not understanding why and like she would prepare you know cow tongues and like uh, lots of things that I just wasn't sure about like I didn't understand and so I would do lots more research re- realizing that um the everyday little quirks and traditions and like little um habits of my family were a part of cultural magic and so it was really cool learning that um it didn't last that long you know once I became a teenager Christianity came became like a really big thing in my family so it's just like okay now you're done with this you know now even I had like a, a really nice grimoire it wasn't nice but like I had a thick grimoire I'll say that I'll say it was thick and my mom took it she took it away from me she destroyed it and it broke my heart you know thinking that this entirely cool world that I was a part of, I was no longer allowed to be a part of. So it was really difficult. I definitely went through um, like a grieving period because it was like um, everything was this massive rainbow and then it started raining on my grade and everything, you know, it was just gone. That's so so heartbreaking. Yeah, it sucked. (laughs) You know? That sucks. So it sounds like you grew up and still do a lot of, folk magic like it's all mm-hmm. almost yeah. all or all yeah. folk based yeah all folk based yeah mm-hmm. that's cool yeah. what does your practice look like right now so right now it's oh, it's very interesting right now <laughs> uh it's very it's very unique I, I mix a lot of um intuition into everything that I do of course and so while the basis is um very similar to hoodoo I wouldn't give it a very, I don't give it a title. I don't give it a, 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 um, any kind of like a term other than like basic nature. Um, like how do, how do I put it? It's really hard to put into words. I work with nature spirits. I work with nature mostly. My goal 
is to my goal in magic and in life always is to infuse love and understanding into everything that I do so that um, my presence is making the space around it better. If what I'm doing isn't positive, positively affecting the earth or my pets or my family or the people that I associate with on a daily basis, then I take that back into self-reflection and figure out what I can do to better service the world. And that's like per that's personal to me. You know, I, I never expect other people to do that same thing. You know what I mean? Like to be in service to the world, like don't, don't, you know, it's not, it's not something that I want everyone to do, but I, it's something that for me, my practice is about being better and making the world better and using my physical vessel and my really cool squishy brain to manipulate energy to make things better for people, to make things easier for people, or for, to make things um, more of uh, a challenge for people so that they can grow. You know, love and growth. That's what my practice looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on your Instagram, you're always posting these like beautiful nature walks and these like nature shots, and you're just you're like walking through. And one of the things that I absolutely love about your stories specifically is that every time you're walking through and like doing some kind of nature walk, it's like, you're just saying hello to your neighbors. And yeah. I think that th like, that's, that's what it looks like. Right. Like that's a lot of the time what yeah. like a, having a relationship with the local and nature spirits looks like is just like, Oh, Hey, it's you. Or like, I recognize this plant and you're just saying hello because you recognize them that they are your friend. And so it's, um, I just like seeing that because you're showing your practice in real time, like happening. Yeah. Um, what is that? Have you like moved around and then like had to say goodbye to certain species or like spirits and have to re rebuild a relationship? Like what, what is building a new relationship with nature spirits and local spirits look like to you? It is. Yes. I have moved a lot in my life. I have moved so much I can't, even <laughs> tell you how many, I can't even tell you how many times um uh so yeah I have had to say goodbye to a lot of areas that were really beautiful and, and really magical for me that I had a really nice relationship with the species that were around there with even like the those sweet little creatures that were there like were they were used to my presence you know in their in their realm and and having to leave places like that is hard because sometimes especially the first one of the first places that um, I felt really powerful in a little tiny piece of woods that was by the school that I used to go to and I would go there on you know the weekends and I would spend hours just sitting by the creek talking and like you know encouraging plants like a nutcase sitting outside <laughs> like literally telling the little sprouts like they're doing a good job and I'm so proud of them and stuff like that. And oh, just, that's like, so wholesome. <laughs> Just being being present with me. Obviously, I had like a friend, maybe maybe a friend. Like at any time, I was very, I was the weird kid for sure. Um, but I was lucky enough not to care about being the weird kid. But yeah, I I would spend a lot of time there, and I would bring like snacks and stuff, and I bring like food for like squirrels and birds, and I would just like sit there, and I would try to be as cool as possible to see how close they would get to me. And I I really wanted to be like no white no white witch. And yeah. saying goodbye to that place was hard. It was hard. It was the first place where I felt myself settling to settling into feeling comfortable being alone in nature. And it was the first time I felt the magic that was around me. And I, I felt like I could see it around me. I could see the growth. I could see the life and everything. And I, I had some like, amazing experiences there as a teenager. And so leaving that space, I felt like I was leaving magic for good, you know. And like when you move into a new space, um, sometimes it doesn't feel the same, especially when you move into a space during this season, like when it's winter and it's freezing and everything's dead. And so you're already discouraged, like especially as a child, you know, you're like discouraged and you're like, Ugh. you don't feel the same feeling. So it takes a while to build up that repertoire with the area around you. And it does take a lot of effort and takes a lot of reassurance that, you know, this is something that's real and that you can find it again because that is hard to hard to remember when you when you move anywhere you know you don't believe that anything's going to be the same because it's not but it can still be better and you can still 
those relationships. Ooh. Sorry, my alarm went off. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's it's definitely a culture shock too. Like you think that you know switching schools, it's it's like switching schools, kind of. You know, like mm-hmm. there's a whole new system, there's a whole new dichotomy of relationships and hierarchy, and like different people and you don't know anyone or where to go and the schedule's all fucked up and like you're like I don't mm-hmm. I don't know where this classroom is you know like mm-hmm. it's 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 a tough <laughs> time to move and then like putting that on a spiritual level that's definitely like it sucks <laughs> yeah it, yeah but it's also fun because you might meet a spirit that you end up becoming like lifelong partners with in some way mm-hmm. you know like a, a spiritual partner or a familiar maybe if you're super lucky, I don't know, but mm-hmm. um, do you have a familiar? I do. Yeah. You do? I have to, uh, yeah, I do. I have um, the old, well, I have a couple that have just kind of sat around in, mm-hmm. in my realm. My first was an Eagle, which is so cool. Um, but definitely born out of that need to feel nurtured and to feel safe because I did move a lot like I moved a lot when I was a kid and I never felt settled or or like welcome anywhere so that eagle her name was Polly she was my first ever familiar and really cool really interesting sort of um feeling of just being encompassed by these these giant wings that would just come in and like put me in a little cave oh. and I'm like, this is so good um and since I moved from there I've had um, a tree spirit for the past 20, like 27 years that has just been with me always. Um, Kind of like that wonderful grandpa and, you know, from Lord of the Rings feeling, you know, that's that big, big, can be scary, but but very nurturing sort of um, tree energy that I really love, absolutely adore and just always present and always very protective and really cool really cool I there's nothing like more I mean, of course there are loads of things more rewarding but there's just something very special about finding a tree and talking with it and having it give you the time of day you know because usually you sit with a tree and it's just like you're sitting with a tree and you recognize it's awesome but to feel an energy from that tree and to feel like a presence you know, like wanting to have anything to do with you and to recognize you um, not just as a fleeting blip in their their lifetime, you know, is such an incredible feeling. And so I feel so lucky to to have befriended a tree, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful spirit. It's a wonderful oh my spirit. God. Tree spirits are some of my favorites. They're yeah. interesting, I think. Like I can't say that they're like always kind and like friendly, no. they're not, but, <laughs> yeah, that's like- but like I, they're definitely like an interesting energy to them, no matter what tree it is. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you. Like having a tree spirit that is actually like gives a shit about you is like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like you're cool is humbling. You're like, oh my God, because they mm-hmm. live forever. Like they don't, yeah. they don't matter to them, you know? And so yeah. that for them to kind of like acknowledge you is kind of a big honor. Um, mm-hmm. You talk about, so switching topics kind of massively, you talk a lot yeah. about, uh, you have ADHD, right? Yeah. Well, I have uh, autism. Oh, autism. Excuse me. Yeah. What is yeah. that like practicing? Like, does that have any like effect on how you practice or on like if there's things that you're reading that because there's a lot of like visualization is kind of one of the things that I hear a lot about where people are like well I can't visualize and yeah you know like it's it's one of those like really common things that everybody's like well just visualize it's so easy yeah is there something like that for you that um is like it's so easy and you're like no it's not no, for it's me. not like, what's that yeah. like so there are a couple of things that are really difficult for me to to do. I can do them, but it just takes me forever to, to like get it in there. I'm a very visual learner. Um, so when it comes to uh, studying others' works, which is something that I love doing, it takes me so much longer to get that information to stay in the book. So I have to read it physically. And then I have to listen to the audio. So I, I often buy the audiobook and the physical copy of books 
so that I can read along with the person saying it in my head so that I can hear it and see it at the same time. Because otherwise, it's not going, it's not staying in there. I read books constantly. I'm constantly reading books. But when it comes to anything, um, what is the word? Reference, like reference material. I need to be listening to it and reading it and writing notes at the same time in order to retain any of that information. And it's, mm-hmm. it's super frustrating. <laughs> I've like never the most thought of things. reading a book while I don't know why that's like never occurred to me but that's such a good idea yeah yeah I mean it's two forms of input of the same thing that's in yeah that, I'm gonna have to try that and see how that goes for me. yeah it's great it's wonderful and yeah it really really helps especially when you get to read a book by the author because then you can hear exactly how they um uh, so you can hear exactly how they would say it and how it feels to them. You can hear in their inflections what it means. Because it, again, like if I can't see a person talking to me and I don't see their expression, I don't really understand how they're saying it. I don't understand what their feeling is behind them saying it. So I don't know if they're saying it, you know, in a snarky way, if they're being sarcastic or if they're angry or if they're, you know, joyful. I can't tell unless I'm looking at them. So it, it helps to be able to hear someone saying it so I can hear how their voice changing when they say something you know yeah that definitely makes sense I recently heard I don't know which author it is but they they published through a publishing company again I if I knew what the publishing company and the author was (laughs) I would tell you um I could probably look it up but they published with a publishing company and apparently uh it's about Mexican folk magic I believe Mm. um so interesting stuff but I guess that the publishing company created an audiobook without the author's knowledge, oh, which yeah. like, I would be livid, first of all, because yeah. I'm a control freak. I'd be like, no, if there's anything with my work, like I, I either know about it minimum or I do it myself um, because I don't want anybody else touching it. But at the same time, they hired somebody who I think butchered a lot of the um Spanish words in the book oh, which is like a yeah. huge no-no like how do you why that that's a whole other rant but yeah. um so <laughs> I guess a lot of the a lot of the reviews came out about the audiobook and was basically like saying how disappointed they were and kind of like putting that on the author be, but you know the author didn't even know and so yeah, that part. I mean that's a completely different side tangent but yeah like I I think like keeping that in mind um, also, because I'm learning more and more as a lot of my internet peers are starting to write books, which is really exciting. Um, I'm learning more and more about like the inside of working with a publishing company and what that's like and how little control the authors actually have over things. So scary. So, you know, like like a lot of the time when I'm trying to review a book, I try really hard to keep that in mind because it's like, there's titles that I'm like, I wouldn't have chose that title. I wouldn't have chose that Mm -hmm. the, the way the book was designed. I wouldn't have chose, like, there's a lot of things I would have changed, but putting it into perspective, like, I know that most likely the author didn't have a say in it, or they were saying like, we're not going to publish you unless you do. I don't know. So I try really hard to like give the author a lot of leniency because I know that authors want to be raw and vulnerable, but publishing yeah. companies want to be pristine and pretty and marketable. And yep. there's a lot of flaws in that. So yeah. rant over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's completely true. And it's something that I just discovered because I had been approached by a couple of publishing companies to write a book. And I'm like, based on what? Like, why are you approaching me based on what? And it was based on my youtube channel and mm-hmm. how many subscribers i had i'm like okay cool i would love to i write stories all the time but like what what are you trying to make me write That's yeah what i want because they're definitely doing that and then they're what they're doing is they're giving you like you know they're writing it and then they're giving you a little section where you can put your input in and i'm like ooh, ew Absolutely I don't want to do that. That. no yeah no that's <laughs> that's happened to me a ton i mean again a lot of my other peers are telling me that it's happened and it's like it it feels gross. Like mm-hmm. it just feels gross where they're like, Hey, you should write a book. And you're like, why? And they're like, I it just, we can slap your name on and it'll sell. And you're like, ew, yeah. that's terrible. Like <laughs> I don't, you know, like I'm not going to just shit out a book and like yeah. give my audience 
garbage that they've literally read a hundred thousand times like here's a witchcraft 101 but like n- get away from me yeah get the fuck away exactly. from me i'm not writing that literally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, oh actually and a totally another topic um yeah i just i just have a lot of questions for you because you're an interesting yes. um yeah there's a it's right here hell yeah so you have a child an adorable adorable I child. do I love you on there um <laughs> how do you interact magic with him and also like I said I found this book I don't know if you've read it I haven't read it yet <gasps> no I haven't I really want to try so some of the things, like with my nieces and nephews and even with my friends like mm-hmm. my friends are all children so maybe mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have to like try it but it looks really cute with just like interacting and using children not using children <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, like involving is the word I was looking for involving yeah. children in your magical practice and so like how do you do that yeah as I, okay so Yule is super into magic of course <laughs> it's so much fun to play with him and to like show him things um the first thing that he was the most interested in was crystals and, and minerals and stones of course that was one of my main interests too when I was a child so and he is on the spectrum as well so he is very interested in knowing exactly what it is there's an animal hair in my nostril <laughs> <laughs> okay he wants to know exactly what it is he wants to know you know um what it's for and he likes to know if it's like related to any of the other crystal crystals and so we he likes to categorize them and so we put them all down and, and he'll look at them and talk about them and then recently he's been giving them his own interpretation of their magical properties which I love so that's something that he gets really into you know he'll pull one up and say okay this one is specifically for one of the cats he'll say this is for Catra and this is going to help her do this and I'm like okay okay you know and so he'll he'll take it and he'll like put it on her a little bit and so cute. Like, <laughs> oh, I love that. It's so cute. It's the cutest thing ever. Um, and sometimes we'll build an altar together together and I'll let him put whatever he wants to put on there. That was something that my mentor I saw that she did with her daughter. Um, when her daughter decided she wanted to start practicing, I think she was like fourteen or fifteen, maybe. Maybe even six, I don't know, maybe sixteen. But she had her build her altar based off of what she was the most interested in in life. So she went to the store and she owns um, Avalon, which is a, a magic shop in Florida. So she went to the store and she chose whatever she wanted to use with representations on her altar. So she chose like gnomes and like mushrooms and unicorns. And I had never seen that before. I had only ever seen people using like pretty traditional tools and pretty traditional looking, um, you know, figures and stuff of deities, you know, Artemis and Apollo and you know, a very good depiction of the green man or, or you know, the horn, the horn god and stuff. But she used unicorn as the representation for her god and goddess and her altar. And I thought, it's so dope. And I was like, that's what I want to do, A, for myself, and then B, for you, whatever he wants to build an altar. So sometimes he will use, like, Legos of a certain color. He really likes to use red a lot in his, in his magic. So he'll put, like, very specific colored Legos and very specific places to represent uh, the elements stuff like that and it's just really fun for him and you know I talked to him about different spirits and different um, plants and why life is sacred and why it's important to show kindness and love to all creatures and all life and everything and so he really he's very receptive to it he's really interested in just um, understanding why everything is so I always give him an answer you know I love giving him an answer why you know it's fun it's fun being able to show him magic and to be able to you know give him his own space and his own interpretations and let him feel it out for himself that's amazing you're raising such an intentional child I hope so I think (laughs) I'm trying (laughs) just that's just so I mean I, I feel like intention is something that maybe that's why everybody is so fixated on it especially in the magical community is because it's something that you're not really taught you know growing up like Mm. you're taught these are how things are and this is the structure that you follow but 
you're not really taught why that structure is there or why mm -hmm. the way things are, you know, like you're not taught to be intentional about things. And, um, when, when people learn how to do that, it's, it's kind of freeing. Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it opens your world up to things. I had some roommates recently reach back out and not reach as if we like, we're out of touch, but we're not <laughs> roommates anymore. And, um, you know, they were showing me their new place and, uh, it was really cool because they were like, you know, living with you. Cause obviously I'm like, everything has to look how I want it to look. Um, mm -hmm. but you're like living with you, you know, I realized how important it is to like make my space exactly how I want it. Um, and it doesn't have to be expensive, but it's just like, I just want it to look a specific way or feel a certain way. And they were like, I just realized how important that was to like make my home feel like home and yeah. like make that intention there. It's not just a place that I live. And I was like, that's really nice, but it's not something you're taught growing up, you know, like mm -hmm. it's something that you have to be taught by your parents or by the people that raise you and live with you, I think. And it's, I think that that's a very valuable thing that you're teaching him. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I appreciate it. Um, what kind of like offerings or interactions do you have with nature spirits usually, or do you have like stories that you want to tell like a funny Ooh, or, like, crazy? Um, I'm trying to think of some that I haven't heard already. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really cool, uh, actually, I had a really cool experience last night that I definitely want to talk about, and I just remembered it right now. Hell yeah. Um, so, so I'm going through like a um, pretty rough emotional time right now with a friend, and it's the first time I've ever gone through anything like this, so it's like really hard, and my whole body's involved, so I've been really like doubling down on meditation, just like at the drop of the hat, I'd be like, I'll be like, okay, I need to, I need to put my headphones on. I need to meditate right now, <laughs> like, because I'm, I'm really just trying to go through this process as, as like, you know, naturally as possible. And so I, I was taking a shower last night. I got out of the shower. I was like, let me lie down and like try to like really give myself uh, a talk down into sleep instead of listening to like a video. Usually I listen to videos or I'll put like, you know, some ASMR on something like that to help me fall asleep let me do it for myself right now because I'm exhausted but I also want to intentionally go to sleep so I lay down and you know, telling myself you know just relax just relax each part of your body don't think of anything don't make up any stories like try to completely enter like empty your mind and just focus on releasing the tension in your body because when I'm emotionally upset I'm like um like a brick Oh my God, me like, too. Like, me it's too. Terrible. The whole it's right so side bad. of my body just is like pain all the time yeah. when I'm depressed. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> I get it. It's the worst, you know what? And I, I, I make fun of myself all the time about it. But you know what? My worst places where I hold all of my tension, my ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a butt cheek clencher. Butt clencher. <laughs> Yes, it's so. Wor I'm like always just like if I'm upset and it, <laughs> like they're just oh they're just clenched God. all the time. So I have to like physically shake <laughs> my legs out and go like unclench the cheeks, like try to relax. So I'm laying there, I'm relaxing myself, I'm not thinking of anything, which I'm really good at, which I say I know is is unique. I'm really good at just looking at the colors behind my eyelids and just and letting that be like, all I'm thinking about, just letting myself chill out and relax. And as I do that, I start to fall asleep. I'm in that state where I'm like, oh, my body is asleep. You know, I'm entering into just headspace and it's a hair. But to me, I go, a rabbit pops up. Really soft looking, um, long, obviously like a jackrabbit or a hare. But of course, my brain is a rabbit. And it's a beautiful brown bunny. And she starts talking. And she's like, Listen, listen, listen. Um, you're doing a great job. Relax, relax. And her voice is changing the whole time, trying to find the voice that works the best. So it's like, uh, 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 but like, act like doing like la different tones for each word until it settles into a really deep, velvety voice. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm hearing it. And I'm like, 
Okay, cool. Tight, 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 tight. And she's talking and she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be here. Not the way I'm saying it, but in a much more eloquent way, but I'm going to be here for you for this. Like, I'm going to walk through this with you. I know that this is the energy that you've been looking for. And I was like, yeah, rabbit, she was a hair, a hair. And I'm like, okay, a hair. <laughs> like, and I was like, a hair, okay. <laughs> you got it. Sorry, my bad. Like, like very specific, a hair. And she's like, and, and this is this is what we're going to do. She's like, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. But we're going to work through this together. I'm going to be here with you. And we're going to get through this um, with as much prosperity as you started with. Because you didn't lose anything from this two month like hiatus. You didn't lose anything. So don't worry about anything that was lost. We're going to do this together. And we're going to do this, you know, you're going to start by creating for yourself a new foundation. I'm like a new foundation like I don't want to do that I don't want to start over again I don't want to I I I don't want to and she's like I don't care what you don't I don't care what you don't want oh. <laughs> you know like okay. <laughs> this is what you have to do so start start planting your seeds start with pushing your roots into the ground again and I'm thinking well when am I going to get some flowers you don't even think about flowers Start pushing your roots into the ground again. And this is, as, as she's saying this, it's fading back out. I'm starting to go into regular weird dreams. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, that was really cool. And I, I start dreaming about regular stuff. And I'm like, I just had a cool dream. And, and I don't know what her name is. And she goes, Den. And then that's it. And then she was gone. And then I, I, I slept for a little bit. And then I woke up. And I like, looked at my husband. <laughs> and then I was like, that was cool. Okay, and then went to sleep. <laughs> but it was such a specific, such a specific interaction, and I hadn't had an interaction that that like blatant in a while, you know, because I don't like to go outside in winter. <laughs> I hate it. I, I hate it. It's too cold for me. It's so cold. It's warmer now. I've been having some warmer days now, but I don't like going outside in nature. So I do. All I often feel very disconnected um in the winter because I don't have the same um like excitement to go outside and be among the the little naked trees you know but it was a very clear you weren't seeking me out but I'm here to help you with this because clearly you need some help <laughs> and I know that You've been asking for a while, and so it's like, here I am. I'm a hare, not a rabbit, not a bunny, you know. And I'm like, okay, okay, cool. I'm ready. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for this, this new chapter, this den. That always the feels hare. really comforting, I think, when you have a spirit reach out, or just like, even if you reach out first, mm. to have something like that. And one of the, um, I don't know if you've read Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller yet. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Fantastic book on, on spirit work, but he mentions, cause I'm always like, when I have interactions like that personally, I'm always like really skeptical of like, that was just my brain talking to me or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. um, one of the things that he points out is like, don't think about like, while you're having the interaction, don't think about like, is this a spirit is this me like just like have the interaction have it be in it mm -hmm. accept it and then afterwards think about it or like you know take notes or whatever of okay was any of this information stuff that I didn't already know and especially like a lot of the time when we are kind of like when we're like trying to push something like we're trying to validate what we already think the answer is um, mm -hmm. and I've had interactions, like I had, it was months ago, but I did a, um, like a ritual with my ancestors and was just kind of like, you know, all right, where do I go? There's a lot of changes happening. And they gave me information that I was like, but I don't want that. And they were like, too bad. And I was like, yeah. I really don't want that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, but that's really too bad. And I was like, I, like I, and I think that's one of the things too, is like, if you're getting information that like yeah, that, that makes sense of what they're saying, but it's like, I really don't want to do that. 
that's probably the spirit because you are most likely wanting to like validate your own feelings of like, no, 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 just, you know, do the easy thing or not even the easy thing, but just do the thing that you think is right when you're getting different information, right? Like it's kind of like that thing. So exactly what you, your experience was um, entailing of how she was like, just create a new foundation. And you were like, no. And she was like, yeah. Then you were like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, I don't yeah. want to do that. She's like, that's too fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I feel like I do that all the time. Like, I do it all the time. Yeah. And I thought that I had already been in a place where I had to plug in my phone. Sorry, it's, it's, You're it's good. deciding that dying is like cool right now. Um, Yeah, I just feel like, especially when it comes to friendships for me, I'm the type of person that's like, I, I, I like making friends a lot. It's really fun. But I always have very specific people that are just there forever. They're just always there. Mm-hmm. And to, to think that I have to create that kind of relationship, again, I just feel like it's impossible. You know, I feel like it's just, I'm, I'm 40. Like, <laughs> you imagine like trying to add more like really significant and, and, and serious friendships and you're like, but 40, everyone's so busy. Like, that's not something that, that I feel like is realistic. But no, it is realistic, apparently. And, and so, so that's what my, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be creating and cultivating newer, deeper relationships with people that I don't know, apparently. I mean, I'm here for it. I'm game. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Please. That's Yeah, that's a great way to live life, though. Um, yeah. So we're coming up on our time for the the public video do you have anything that you want to plug before I mean I'll have all of your links in your link tree and stuff but like is there anything specific that you're like go look at this like (laughs) no I don't I I just like snuck that up on you (laughs) I don't though you know I I've been so ill for the past like two months I haven't been doing anything but you know what I would like to say in general as I I as I am creating my new roots, my new foundation. Um, I will say that my practice has evolved so much in the past six months. And the fact that a lot of people have this idea about what we do as quote unquote witches or what we do as, as magic practitioners, they don't recognize the fact that there are different reasons why people go into this kind of a a practice and especially um those who are in our field for the betterment of themselves and the betterment of other people if you're someone who wants to and believes that you can make the world better then allow yourself that privilege of exploring how you can make the world better you know i think it's i think it's something that we need as humans more people who are thinking about what they can do to positively impact the world you know um if it's within your capacity and I think it's within a lot of people's capacity and I don't think that they feel like they can do it I feel like there's always that like why would something that I do help the entire world you know it just seems so silly like you're a grain of sand or beach you know but sharing yourself sharing your experiences sharing a kind word a smile you know giving someone 50 minutes of your time where they may never have 50 minutes of anyone else's time it can change so much in a person's life and changing something in a person's life will help them to want to change something in someone else's life and it'll be a trickle down effect and we will affect each other positively and i think that that's something that the world needs so badly and that's if nothing else I said today sat in anyone's mind, I hope that that sits in someone's mind. You can make a difference in this world as an individual. You can. Absolutely. I believe that you can. So, as the, so many people believe that we can and do make a difference in each other's lives every single day. So if you have the capacity to do so, know that kindness really does matter. I love that. I think that's so important. And it seems to be a very common perspective with a lot of people who work with nature and especially trees, because I think that's the lesson that they teach you. Definitely. 
So thank you. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull you over to Patreon, but yeah. with the rest of the world, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>